they, as well as being, you know, immune modulating, there are a number of mushrooms, like we talked a bit about lion's mane, but those that manage uh, the central nervous system. So something like reishi, it is one of the most immunomodulating mushrooms, but it's also known as a nervous system balancer. So it's right. something that, you know, has been used in traditional medicine for sleep, stress, um, you know, anxiety, depression, pain, you know, for millennia. And now there is research, you know, in each of these areas. And it's one that is kind of known for calming the nervous system and for helping to sort of uh, slow down or reduce the stress response. So that's one that, uh, you know, is a really useful one. And the other kind of key thing, like, you know, if you look at any of the traditional uh, mentions of reishi it's considered the mushroom of eternal youth um, and that's because one of the key things that it does is it's an anti-inflammatory and antioxidant I think actually it's possibly one of the most potent antioxidants out there and so of course what that is doing is you know oxidation and inflammation are two of the things that cause cellular aging um, so you know taking reishi preventatively is going to be one of those things that is reducing inflammation and oxidation in the body so from a you know a longevity point of view it's a wonderful mushroom. But then if you have any conditions where oxidation or inflammation are an issue, which mm. is pretty much all Western diseases or living in a city and being stressed and breathing polluted air, it's also going to be having a counterbalancing effect there. Wow. I mean, the mushroom of eternal youth. Again, you've sold that one. <laughs> so it's sort of a healthy aging mushroom. We can yeah. think of it that way. And um, yeah, fantastic what you just described there. So this is good for for nervous system conditions. I recently used this actually on a patient of mine that's got um, really severe anxiety. Um, and because it's also, if I'm not mistaken, uh, reishi is an adaptogen. Exactly. Do you want to explain what an adaptogen is? Yeah, so, so basically an adaptogen is something that helps the body adapt to stress. Uh, and uh, there are a number of herbal adaptogens, but reishi is probably the best known of the mushroom adaptogens, although actually all mushrooms have a degree of an adaptogenic uh, function. And that, again, like this immunomodulating effect, it means that you know, it's not just going to have a calming effect. It's going to have this adaptive effect. So it's not like, um, you know, taking a sedative, but it's like if someone is anxious or they're overstimulated and they take reishi, it's going to help their nervous system adapt and calm down. But if someone is depressed and they're, you know, they're, 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 you know, their stress response is like, you know, inactive and they're in freeze, then again, reishi can actually, you know, modulate up uh, and have that adaptogenic effect and give them a bit more energy and a bit more kind of vitality. Wow, fantastic. Thank you for explaining. And on this topic of reishi, whilst we're here, um, another area that reishi is sometimes used for, I believe, is for prostate health. Mm -hmm. Would you mind just explaining why the prostate, kind of how that all works? So I think the main, you know, uh, effect or benefit for reishi is that anti-inflammatory effect because of course you know whether and actually uh, reishi can be used either in benign uh, prostatic hyperplasia or in for, for prostate cancer it is one of the key mushrooms in uh, you know the the hefas um you know, it's called Mycomen, you know, the oncology um, product, uh, you know, it is one of the most potent mushrooms and it is like it's having a massive anti-inflammatory effect uh, and also, you know, it, it, cellular oxidation, you know, this, this effect of slowing the degeneration of cells and promoting them, you know, maintaining their health and their patency is something that reishi does really well. So it's going to do that, you Makes know, sense. for the prostate. And you mentioned benign prostatic hyperplasia, just for our listeners, basically an, an enlarged prostate that's not cancerous. Mm -hmm. Um, it makes complete sense. I, am I, I don't know if this is uh, exactly right, but I, I think I read that reishi um, reduces the production of the more potent form of androgen or male sex That's hormone. Right. Is that is that right? That's also right. Yes, yeah. you're absolutely right. So we talk about um, the androgens, basically mm -hmm. the male sex hormones. The one everyone knows is, of course, uh, testosterone. But um, testosterone is converted to a very potent form. And mm -hmm. basically, when it comes to prostate enlargement, this is the one you don't want too much of. And what Reishi is very good at, and thank you for clarifying, is that it it reduces the conversion of testosterone to what we call DHT, yeah. which is the very potent one. So it makes sense even more mechanistically in terms of how that's working.